For today's recipe, Link will be joined by IQ, Gastro Bob, and backed up as always by Guinea Page and the Animal Crackers. Today, in the Gastroblast kitchen, we're making pie! Remarkable, Link. I've even got a pie chart showing my three favorite kinds of pie. Apple, blueberry, and lemon meringue. That's sweet, Gastrobob. But how about something savory, like, uh, like chicken pot pie? This recipe makes eight servings, so we're gonna need one and a quarter cups of chicken stock, three quarters of a pound of cooked, boneless, skinless chicken breasts that have been chopped into bite-sized pieces, three quarters of a cup of chopped onion, three quarters of a cup of frozen peas, three quarters of a cup of chopped carrots, partially boiled, three quarter cup of chopped celery, two prepared nine inch pie crusts, a quarter cup of all purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter, two tablespoons of milk, we're using whole milk. The mise en place, French for everything in its place. Link has got all his ingredients, washed, peeled, chopped, sliced or diced, poured, measured, and ready to go so we can get right into the game of cooking. For amateurs and professionals in the kitchen, it's a smart play to be organized. First, we're gonna preheat our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we're ready to make our pie filling. After you've melted your quarter cup of butter, it's time to add your onions and your celery. And we're gonna cook them until they're soft. This will probably take about 10 minutes. Lab rat, speed dial, please. Now that the onions and celery have softened in the butter, I'm gonna add flour. This will create a roux. Wondering what a roux is? Well, wonder no more. I'm on the case. A roux is a thickening agent, usually made of flour and butter. Used for creamy sauces. No tricky terminology here. I'm gonna turn down the heat and let our roux cook for about three minutes. Just in time for our, wait for it, wait for it. Chicken stock. It's best to use hot chicken stock, that way it mixes easier with your roux. You know how melted butter gets hard when you put it back in the fridge? Well, if you use cold stock, it might harden the butter in the pan. Mmm, see how it's all beginning to harden? I made this chicken stock myself. Chicken stock that Link made himself? It's an offside sideline maneuver. To make stock, Link would have slow cooked or simmered ingredients such as bones and vegetables in water alongside herbs and seasoning. There's a scrum of scrumptiousness in every spoonful of stock, making an effective base to many dishes, particularly soups and sauces. But what if you don't have any homemade stock? If you don't have homemade stock, no problem. You can use stock from a box or a can. Just make sure to use one that's low in salt. Could use some pepper. This is the perfect consistency. See how it coats the back of a spoon? I'm gonna turn our mixture back up to a boil. The temperature, it's rising, it's boiling. Once it starts to boil, reduce the heat and let it simmer for about five minutes. Lab rat, speed dial, please.
To complete our pie filling, we're gonna add our milk, our cooked chicken, our frozen peas, and our parboiled carrots. Ah, the parboiling defensive play. Parboiling is when you partly cook something by putting it into boiling water. Carrots can take a long time to cook, but Link bypassed this through the art of parboiling. That gave the carrots a head start, so that when you bite into your chicken pot pie, you'll have soft carrots instead of crunchy carrots. Back to the action. Now that the filling's ready, it's time to prepare the crust. You can find these ready-made pie crusts in the frozen section at your grocery store. They even come in their own nine-inch pans. Let's fill the first crust. Then, use the second pie crust as a top. You want to pinch or crimp around the edges to create a seal so your filling doesn't fall out. And here's the important part. You want to make a hole at the top of your pie about the size of a nickel or a quarter, right here. Steam is water that has become so hot that it has changed its physical state, like when you boil a kettle. Watch out, steam is very powerful. And if there's no way for it to escape in your pie, it can actually explode. Steam? Why would there be steam in my pie? Don't you need water to make steam? Fruits and vegetables are made up of water. When they're cooking inside the pie crust, the water from the onions, celery, carrots, and peas is released and turned into steam. Steam actually takes up more room, so as it builds up inside the pie crust, it starts to push at the crust, wanting to get out. Imprisoned steam wanting to get out? For the first time as a culinary crime fighter, I actually want something to escape! But when it comes to the pie crust, that steam has got to go. Making a hole in the top of your pie crust will help release that steam and prevent that pie from exploding. But it also prevents the pie crust from becoming soggy. For this pie eater, there's no worse culinary crime than a soggy crust. So make that hole, Link. Make that hole. Gotcha. One hole coming right up. Now our pie is almost ready for the oven, so the next step is optional, an egg wash. Um, that's not the kind of egg wash I had in mind. To make the egg wash, you're gonna need an egg and one tablespoon of milk whisked together. Then, we're gonna brush it on top of our pie with a pastry brush. Link is on fire today with technique. Mixing eggs with a liquid such as water or milk creates an egg wash. Without it, the pie crust will bake up fine, but we also eat with our eyes. So if a golden brown glaze is what you're after, an egg wash is mandatory kitchen color commentary. Now, our pie is finally ready to go into the oven. Make sure to put it on a baking sheet in case any of our yummy filling bubbles out. We're gonna bake it for about 45 minutes or until it's golden brown and bubbles through the hole at the top. In the oven, molecules get more energy and start moving faster and faster with the heat, causing air pockets to get bigger and bigger. The veggies are losing water and starting to convert into steam. It's the ninth inning, the last 10 yards, the match point, the final round. Food has been prepared and that's no preamble. No food fouls here. Link has been keeping it clean and keeping it focused. <laughs> and from the smell of things, keeping it cooking. Wow, that smells awesome. But remember, it might look great coming right out of the oven, but it's really hot. You want to let it sit for about 15 minutes before serving it. Which gives me an idea. I have plenty of time to clean up. Let's tidy up, let's tidy up. Let's tidy up. Let's tidy up. Let's tidy up, 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 let
When you finish and the cooking's done It's honey Even though you had lots of fun You still gotta clean up the pots and pans Gotta put them away You gotta wash your hands You gotta do your best to clean up your mess Let's tidy up Let's tidy up Come on, do your best to clean up your mess Let's tidy up Mmm Ah, good! Good day, Gastroblasters. What a dream team we had today with chicken, vegetables, and gravy, all encased in golden pastry. The only explosion here is the explosion of flavor, because creating a vent on the top of the pie, Link prevented a steam blow up. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. I had a gastro blast cooking chicken pot pie with you guys today. See you next time. Thanks for your help today, IQ. No problem, Link. Thanks for the lunch. Gastro. Pie.